I'm Mike Kanberger with Tricky Fast Studios, and today I'm going to give you an introduction to Cat RPG Builder. Cat RPG Builder is the new add-on to Cat Game Builder that Tricky Fast has recently released. It provides all the functionality you would need to build a RPG and very many other types of games that are similar to RPGs with no coding. So I have opened the example here, which is the complete game example. This is the best place to look for an example of pretty much everything that Cat RPG has to offer. So to start, I'm going to talk a little bit about managers. So let's take a look at a character here. Let's take a look at the player. So the player has several managers on it. So manager is effectively a component that you attach to characters or other items that will control kind of its overall interaction with the game system. The next thing I would like to talk about is interactions. So as part of CAT, we have an interaction system. Effectively, this is just giving the player options of things to do at a specific moment. So if you notice, I've selected this NPC here, and he has an interaction manager. If we open up this character, we'll see that he has some interactions on him. So, for instance, there's a dialogue interaction. So, this is a type of interaction that will pop up a dialogue when it's used. There's also a dialogue system. The dialogue system comes with a dialogue manager. There's two types of dialogue. There's a dialogue window that pops up, which is basically when it takes up a bunch of the screen. And then there's also a speech bubble, which can happen, can pop up over people's heads. And we can set a prefab for each one of those. We have an intro dialogue here. So underneath the dialogue, we have dialogue lines. And then underneath that, we have two responses. So Cat RPG Builder also comes with an inventory system. And as I already showed on the player, there's an inventory manager. And also, each slot that the player has is defined. So the player has a right hand slot, and that's what he puts his sword in. And then we can also build prefabs for items. For example, here's an apple pie item. So this item is an inventory item. It's a state machine which has three states. On equip, on use, and default. Moving on, we can also have crafting. And crafting works through recipes. So here's a recipe. It's an inventory item, but it has some extra parameters, such as what item gets crafted, how many of them. Underneath it, it has several other items, and these are the required items for crafting. There's also a loot system, and that's generally made up of loot tables, which you can create. So they're weighted, so each item in the loot table has a weight. So something that's part of the NPCs for Cat is behaviors. These are higher level actions that will cause a character to do something. So for instance, here's an attack behavior. This behavior handles moving to a target and getting within range of them, uh, acquiring an attack slot if available, facing the target, and then using an ability to attack. So that's a, an example of a behavior. Another behavior is the wander behavior. That will cause a character to move around randomly. There's also interactive objects. So an interactive object can be like a door, a chest, a gate. Um, let's take a look at these chests over here. So here's a chest. Effectively, all the interactive objects are done with behaviors. So we have a chest behavior. We also have a door behavior and a destructible behavior and several others. Um, but this chest behavior has all the parameters for the chest. The next thing to talk about is the stat system. So the stat system in CAT builds on the value holder system from base CAT. Except for there's new types of values, which are stats. And there's different types of stats. So this is a fuel stat. So a fuel is something like mana or health that is meant to go up and down a lot. So we can have things like a two hit stat, which is a base stat that just has a value. There's also derived stats. 
uh, leveled stats, progression. On the player, we've added a progression manager. And this allows us to keep track of experience and level for the player. Also, how many skill points they have available to spend on a skill tree if there was one. Uh, for combat, in order to make something be able to be in combat, it needs a combat manager. If it wants, to, if you want something to be able to attack, it needs an ability manager. If you want it to just take damage, it needs a combat manager. So as part of combat, we have a ta an attack slot system. Which if I click on the player here, you can see it has these spheres around him. Those are different attack slots. So the idea is that if you have multiple NPCs attacking you, they'll each pick a slot and move to it, and that's where they'll attack from. That way everything looks neat and organized, rather than everybody bunching up or trying to fight for the same position to attack you. Abilities. So, as I mentioned before, there's an ability manager. There's also an ability service. So there are passive abilities that are just always on. And then underneath here, there's three different states or stages. There's the warm-up, the release, and the cooldown. Those happen in order. So first is the warm-up. The release is actually where you want to do damage, uh, but you do damage as part of an effect group. And basically the idea is that an effect group is one set of targets. Uh, they also can have a duration, so they can be instant, duration, or permanent. Uh, target collection is through conditions. We're just doing a raycast condition to make sure that we have line of sight to the target. As long as that's the case, then that's our target. We call this damage action. This is where we should talk about the damage application stack. So the damage application stack is a set of actions and conditions that are run top down uh, in order to check whether the character got hit, uh, whether the character blocked, and all these are optional. This, you can create your own damage application stack. This is completely customizable. So this gets run every time damage is applied and it will either avoid the damage or reduce it. So we've talked about some of the NPC behaviors already, such as wander, attack. There's also patrolling, fleeing, and following. The other thing we can talk about is the faction system. You can define factions and you can define how they feel about other factions. Apparently humans really don't, don't care either way about orcs or barrels. However, orcs really don't like humans. <laughs> and then you can apply a faction manager to a player or an NPC, give them a faction. And there's also conditions and triggers to determine whether a target is a friend or a foe. Finally, Cat RPG comes with a threat manager and a threat system. So if you add a threat manager to a character, and then you can use the threat sensing behavior, uh, which NPCs can use to, to determine whether they should attack a target, and it can check whether they can see it, whether they can hear it, whether it's in proximity, and then change state based on that. So that's a good overview of the systems in Cat Game Builder and how they fit together. I hope you found this video informative and useful. Let us know in the comments if there are other videos or tutorials you'd like to see. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on social media for the latest videos and other news. For more information on Cat or Cat RPG Builder and how they can help you build and prototype RPGs faster, please visit catgamebuilder.com. I'm Mike Handberger with TrickyFast Studios. Thanks for watching.